What's up folks, Mike here at Welling Watches and uh, welcome to the video. This is the, uh, the first in what will hopefully be a series of videos uh, giving you a basic look on how a watch movement is uh, stripped down and serviced and uh, by that I mean where the movement is removed from the case the, uh, the movement is then stripped down into its component parts it's cleaned uh, and then it is uh, assembled and re-lubricated and then checked for timing. So this is going to be done over a series of videos and you must excuse uh, any uh, lighting issues or other kinds of glare issues. This is a fairly new camera setup uh, which I'm trying out but hopefully it won't be uh, too bad. So in this first video we're going to look at how we uncase uh, a movement um, from its casing and also remove the dial and hands and then we'll move on to the next uh, part of the series as and when that comes up. So the watch we're going to look at today is actually a pocket watch. It's a fairly uh, modern pocket watch that's made to look traditional and this one's made by uh, Aero Watch as you can see from the box. Now Aero Watch, if you've never heard of them, um, if you Google search their website you'll see that they've been around since about 1910 and they do um, a whole series of different wrist and pocket watches, uh, all Swiss made and um, all very nice indeed. So this particular model is uh, one of the older models and it comes in a uh, solid sterling silver case, a high quality solid silver case. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit here and excuse any glare. So this has a push button which opens up and we can see it has a nice white enamel dial. Maybe you can zoom in a little closer, get it in focus. So it has a nice white enamel dial. Uh, with some decorative hands and black uh, Arabic numerals and uh, the makers name their Aero watch in a dead center so it's quite a nice watch and there is hallmarks uh, inside the casing here at the end of the series I'll probably try and show a series of still photographs where you can actually see everything a lot better so if we close the lid down we have a removable rear cover and again this has the, uh, the hallmarks which you could probably just make out there so there we go so this is a solid silver case so this will be taken clean uh, and uh, given a light polish to bring back some of the shine and whenever you're starting something like this oh let's zoom out it's a little close you want to have a parts tray so that you can um, keep all the parts um, nice and safe and you don't lose any so the rear case can go in there, we can put the box to one side. So if we zoom in again, well, we can see that there is a uh, 64, if we can focus, a 64, uh, what's this, if we open it up this end, we have a 6498 movement, so this will be either ETA or Unitas, it's probably an ETA, we have a quick, quick, quick look, using the loop, So this is a 6498-1 from ETA, a fairly common movement and a good one to start with. It's fairly easy to see. Now it's already running uh, pretty well, but it could do uh, with a service. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the movement out of the case and we're going to remove the dial and hands and that's where we're going to start with. So we've already taken the back cover off. So the next step is we want to power down the watch whilst the, uh, the stem is still attached. You can do this once it's out of the case of course but it's, it's easier to do it at this point. So you'll need a pair of uh, tweezers and you'll want to put a little bit of wind on the stem. We can zoom in a little closer here so we can actually see it. There we go. So we want to put a little wind on the stem just enough to move the click out of the way and as soon as it gets to that first point we can just move the click out of the way and slowly let the mainspring down. Now the important thing here is when you're letting the mainspring down is not to let it down too quickly all in one in one foul swoop because otherwise you will damage some of the pivots uh, of the train wheels. So as you can see the mainspring is fully let down and we should see the balance start to slow down and eventually it will stop when there's no more power left in the movement. So there we go, the balance is now stopped. We can now safely assume that uh, all the power has gone from the watch. 
can always double check by pulling the click back out into position and the mainspring can't go down anymore. So the next stage, in order to remove the movement from the case, we want to remove uh, the stem so that the movement can clearly uh, come through uh, the rest of the casing. So just here above the crown wheel, you'll usually find a small screw, and this is the setting lever bolt. And when we undo this uh, to a certain degree, it allows us to slide the stem out. Now, you, the important thing to notice about the setting bolts is that you don't want to unscrew it entirely, because if you do that, uh, then the setting lever will fall out on the other side. And if you were planning to let down the main power, uh, the mainspring power, once you've got the movement out of the case, then that's going to be another thing that you're going to have to sort uh, before you can uh, you can do that. So we only want to give it a couple of turns uh, until the stem wants to come out. Now this particular movement, I like to pull the stem out to the time setting position, and you'll hear a click. We set the screwdriver in there. We give it about a turn and a quarter. And that's usually enough to uh, get the stem out. I'm going to zoom slightly outwards. So now that the stem is out, we can release the movement screws that are retaining the movement uh, within the case. So there's one here and there's one here on the other side. On other movements, it may vary. There may be uh, more case screws and maybe case clamps involved, but it's the same kind of principle. So that screw has come completely out and that one's ready on that side. So you take the case screws and you put them uh, just to one side in your uh, tray, keeping them nice and safe. Now that the movement's undone on that side, uh, it, is, it is ready to remove out of the front. So we need to remove this, uh, this front bezel and uh, glass. So on a pocket watch, there's usually a small cut in the lip, which is about here. And it's there that you can gently prise underneath. I'm using a, uh, a scalpel blade very carefully. This isn't terribly sharp, but um, you can use a case knife. I find a scalpel blade has a tendency to get underneath a lot easier. But do take care if you are using a scalpel blade. So there's the front glass and bezel uh, safely removed, and that go in the tray. So I'm going to put on some finger cots here. If you don't know what finger cots are, there are these uh, little rubber grommets that you can put on uh, your fingers, and it stops you spreading any grease or dirt or onto the movement or the casing. So we don't want to get any dirt onto the dial. Helps if you put them on the right way round. Think of them as uh, finger condoms as such. So the movement is in there, but now it's not secured. I've got to be careful not to let the, uh, the movement fall out. So very carefully, that's the case. And we now have the movement uh, outside of the watch. I do apologise about the glare, but I do need light in order to see what I'm doing, which does make it rather difficult. So there we go. So now that the movement is out of watch, what we want to do is we want to put the stem uh, back inside the movement at three o'clock position. Uh, this little tube here is actually to open the casing, so we don't need that. So we can put the stem back in, and we can uh, do up the setting lever bolt again. You want to pull it out just a little bit and push it back in. And tighten it again, which is quite difficult to do with my eyesight and not wearing my glasses. So with the stem still in position, you should be able to pull it out to the time setting position and you should be able to uh, turn the hands around to the 12 o'clock position where we will be taking the hands off. So in order to take the uh, the hands off you're going to need a pair of hand levers. So I'm using a pair of uh, Horotech hand levers here and I'm going to use a silicon dial pad. 
If you don't have a silicon dial pad, you can use a baggie, a small Ziploc bag, uh, something like this, which you might be more familiar with. Um, it's not ideal, but it will certainly do the job and it will reduce the risk of you damaging the dial. So if you don't have uh, one of these silicon discs, um, you can always use one of these little baggies. So just put that out of the way. So we're going to take the levers and we're going to make sure that both the levers reach underneath the hands and try and equ equally on each side and each lever lift the hands out of the way. So that is the hour hand and the minute hand and we can gently let them fall off the dial into the drain. We can replace the silicon there. Seconds hand is slightly offset. And same principle again, get both levers at an angle where they'll go underneath the hand, gently raise it, and that seconds hand is now removed. And again we can gently put this part in the tray, or not because it wants to stay stuck on the dial, typical fashion. So we're using a little bit of Rodico there. If you're wondering what this is, this is uh, Rodico, which is a watchmaking uh, cleaning clay. Um, most of you will probably recognize it as being a green clay, uh, like this. And it comes in uh, tubes like this, a bit like plasticine or Fimo, if you're familiar with that modeling kind of clay. And all this does, it, well, it's got many, many purposes. So you can use it to pick up things, you can use it to hold things. Um, it's good for cleaning. Uh, and all sorts. So if, if you're getting into watch repair uh, as a hobby, uh, then you definitely want to get some of this. It is uh, it's excellent stuff and it can be used for many purposes, uh, but perhaps that's for another video. So now we want to remove the dial. Now this dial is, uh, is secured in place by uh, screws that are into the side of the main plate. Other watches may vary. There may be um, screws that are in the main plate um, on, on this side facing downwards you have to unscrew them, but these ones are on the uh, outside. So we're going to take the correct size screwdriver until we find the screw. Oh no, I apologize on this movement. Uh, it is different, they're not on the side. Uh, just in here where the casing screw was, there's uh, an eccentric screw and on this side there's an eccentric screw. So I was wrong, I do apologize. So an eccentric screw is a screw that you don't fully unscrew because it's actually partially secured into the movement. You turn it enough to let it go and then you can pull it out. So let's see if we can get in there. And my eyesight's not great from this range. So I'm gonna put on a loop so I can actually see it. So excuse me if my head gets in the way. Fine on that side. And we turned it to that side. So these little eccentric screws, which I'm sorry that you, you probably can't see them from that distance, uh, they're round nearly all of the way and then there's a flat portion. And what these do is they're like little cutting discs. They, they cut into the dial feet and they keep it in place. And as soon as you get round to the flat portion, it lets the, uh, the dial feet go. So we can turn that over and uh, very carefully lift lift the dial off the movement and there's the dial uh, safely removed from the movement now if you have one handy it's a good idea to keep the uh, the dial and hands in a little box to make sure they don't get any dust in them or any damage so if you have a little box like that then it's always great to use one of those uh, to keep things uh, safe and sound so this is the first um, part of the video uh, where we've gone over how to remove the movement from the casing. In the next section of the video, which is going to be um, a bit more detailed, is we're going to look at how we take apart a movement, what stages we go through in order to take a movement apart safely. Um, and uh, that will be probably a bit more interesting uh, in that video. But that's it for uh, this first video in the series, and I hope you come back uh, for the rest. Um, it should be uh, interesting as we go along. So until then, Take care and uh, have fun.